Welcome back to Firthy Rambles on a bit. <laughs> Uh, now then, it's good to have you back. Uh, thank you for tuning in. Uh, this video is going to be basically about the TRS mode, grass, gravel and snow. And it's going to be about that because can you see what we've got in front of us here? We've got a drop of snow. Uh, we've had a couple of three drops here in Alberta. Southern Alberta is a funny spot really. The, the weather sort of, we get these Chinooks and it blows hot air through and melts everywhere and then uh, and then snows again the next night so a couple of three days ago it was minus 20 and yesterday it was plus five <laughs> plus seven and last night it snowed again and we get I know I don't know another three or four there's a bunch of geese here look, um, three or four inches of snow um, and I've come out here because I wanted there's a bit of a confusing thing uh, out in 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 TRS land, terrain response system land, uh, and it's the grass, gravel, and snow mode. Now all the other modes seem to be quite well sort of positioned. You know, if you're on sand, you want sand mode, and if you want mud ruts, you want well mud rut mode. And and if you're in, uh, if you you know if you've got I don't know what's the other one here, uh, rock crawl. You know, if you're crawling over rocks, then you want rock crawl rock and crawl mode um, however that is not the case uh, with grass gravel and snow and I'll explain why so uh, grass gravel and snow mode is designed um, to be super sensitive to slip so when the wheels have some slip um, or the, t the surface of the, of the t road is potentially slippy and that's the case with gravel and it is the case with grass uh, and really it's the case with very slick mud as well you know if you've got like that clay like mud um, these kinds of surfaces are, are very slippy and so the vehicle is set up is designed to be very sensitive super sensitive uh, to slip and what it does is it uses a function called DSC and I'll explain that in another video but dynamic stability control is a, is a mechanism that the vehicle uses to cut the power from the engine uh, so that the wheels don't spin much. Now I've got a pal, his name's Ian McDonald, he's a top banana and, um, and he used to do skid pan training and uh, we, we've been speaking about this over the past couple of months and well actually last year I think it were now, a couple of months seemed not so long ago and I was talking to him about what, what he says is an advisable training tool for skid management and, and of course uh, he confirmed what I already knew but as soon as he taught it I wanted to double check and, and what they say is in skid pan training is disconnection of power so it's shoving the vehicle in neutral or, or dipping the clutch as we would you know back if you had those kinds of <laughs> technologies um, but the DSC basically does the same thing what it does is it disconnects well it doesn't disconnect but it re massively reduces the power available on the throttle so while you you can push down on the, the accelerator as much as you like it won't actually do anything because the um, uh, because the the horsepower of the engine is retarded it just doesn't give you any power basically is what happens and, and so you push your foot into the floor and nothing happens <laughs> um, it is designed to stop and control skids that's that's what it's designed to do so if you're barreling into a corner and you hit a patch of black, hit a patch of black ice and the car goes sideways then it detects the movements with the gimbal and your sensors and then it just backs off the throttle all together and, and until you regain control basically until the wheels find traction again and then it very sort of steadily gives you your power back but um, this tool is very handy if you're not very accustomed to driving in these sorts of conditions and don't have much training in the way of skid management but the the reality of the situation is of course that some people do have some skid training and, and uh, do like to just be able to provide that momentum in the process of the, of the maneuver so that the vehicle continues to keep going forwards because in deeper snow one of the problems that you have is that you lose momentum and then you lose traction and 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 then it's all over because you can't overcome the uh, the sort of slippiness of the snow uh, to, to to get that initial 
sort of traction to get that initial movement. And that brings me to the point that of, of the conversation here is that the grass, gravel and snow mold, which is very susceptible to slips and, and skidding, uh, is not always what you want in deeper snow. Now, we don't have any deeper snow, so I'm a bit, I'm, 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 I'm unfortunately inhibited by the fact that I can't sort of demonstrate, but in a deeper snow situation where you're overcoming perhaps six or eight inches of snow, what you're going to want is a bit more, a bit more freedom to, to, for the wheels to spin. You're going to want to uh, have the opportunity to sort of put your boot into it and for the wheels to continue to move to give you that extra momentum to get you up to where you're going or down away from where you've been, if that makes sense. Um, and these are problematic manoeuvres because in grass, gravel and snow it literally won't let you do that because it'll cut all the power away from you. Uh, and it'll inhibit the uh, it'll inhibit your movement. Um, sort of, we've got to touch of snow here, but not really worth bothering about. Um, it'll it'll inhibit your, tr your your progress. Basically, it'll stop you getting where you need to be, and that's part of the problem. If you if you are trying uh, to to navigate deep snow, we do this every year. Uh, we go off and we we get a uh, we get a Christmas tree from out in snowland out in the mountains and uh, the the mountains I've just brought you out here to look at this uh, I'm going to cut to it now because this is a beautiful sunset and it will be I'm actually going to go and try one of the reasons I've come out a little bit before the sun's gone down is going to try and get some drone footage but I didn't have any luck last time I came out anyway uh, that having been achieved um, we go out every year out into snowland into the mountains and we won't find a Christmas tree and up there, the snow can sometimes be 12 inches or 2 feet or 3 feet deep. And sometimes, especially with drifts, you need power to go through them. Now, what would happen if you attempted those drifts in grass, gravel and snow mode uh, is that it would hit the drift, your wheels would start to spin, it would cut the power from the engine, uh, and your momentum would cease because your wheels wouldn't be able to, they wouldn't be allowed to spin, you'd have no or reduced power from the engine and you just end up wedged in the drift basically is what happens. Uh, and so this is why I say that the grass, gravel and snow mode can be misleading because there's many kinds of types of snow. Now this snow that we've got in front of is compacted, it's actually quite slippy but you can see this is underneath a gravel road as you, as you can probably tell. And that means that you've got plenty of traction, even if you had some very basic sort of all-terrain tyres on it, you'd pl still have plenty of tra traction because your tyres would pick up on the gravel and they'd, they'd scooch the gravel and they'd turn the gravel basically as it skids under your wheels, they'd turn your gravel into sort of miniature studs, I guess, I suppose, is... is <laughs> I'm trying to hold the camera steady here, we've got a bit of camera wobble on. Um, so even on this sort of surface you've got plenty of traction all over the place so that's not the issue but where it goes shiny and polished on a tar macadam surface uh, then you're going to want to use a tyre with studs or, or with lots of sipes and a very soft compound and those types of uh, surfaces are where you want really you want the, the, the grass gravel and snow mud it's designed to stop you getting into a bunch of trouble be turning a corner in the middle of a you know in the middle of a town or something like that you don't want to be able to skid around the corner you want it to be able to spot that skid and then cut the power and stop you pushing into it and, and maintain control so you don't bash into cars and people and dogs and things um, but if you came out into the mountains in search of your family Christmas tree for winter time then that's a different kind of snow and the grass gravel and snow mode even though it says snow isn't going to help you do that what you need is what you need is something actually what you need is something like sand or mud ruts um, because you're going to want you're going to want a little bit of uh, a little bit of freedom to, to spin your wheels and you're going to want quite a bit of power down you're going to want to maximize the torque because you're going to want to push through that snow that deeper snow uh, and so you're going to want power and, and mud ruts and sand both give you that power um, sand is helpful here because it, it locks up the rear differentials and it sort of makes everything a bit rigid in, in terms of locked so that everything's tight and, and gives you maximum amounts of, of, of drive uh, mud ruts is the same 
doesn't quite lock everything up as, uh, quite so much because it allows for more axle articulation and in fact that may be beneficial if you're trying to dig down into the snow to find the you know the, the more solid ground then that might be the kinds of that might be the function that you would choose to use and it also depends on your kind of snow we live in southern Alberta here uh, and even in the mountains which are that way a chunk um, even in the mountains what you get is a very uh, dry snow it's like a quite a quite a powdery sort of stuff a very light powdery sort of stuff and it's not very it isn't very wet and when you squeeze it in England if you squeeze snow you, you could squeeze water out of it if you see what I mean but you can't hear if you squeeze it, it just disappears um, and it evaporates very quickly which is why we've got what we've got here because there's not actually a lot of moisture content in it when the warm dry winds come through it, it doesn't doesn't stay icy on the run and buggers off <laughs> evaporates um, so the different kinds of snow that you have would sort of uh, will will mandate what kind of function that you use on your your trs because uh snow uh, sorry sand mode is is better for the kind of snow that we have out here which is light and powdery like sand and it moves away quite quite quickly and it dissipates and and scooches out of the way a bit like almost like dust uh like fine sand um but in wetter climates like the Ontario, Eastern Ontario, Britain or Northern Europe where the, the snow is more um, uh, the snow is more sort of a kind of a, a wet uh, moisture ridden contented thing we'll just dip down here into this bit of a thing and then we can take some video footage here um, that, uh, that wetter stuff is, is maybe something that requires mud ruts because you want to dig deep down to get at the more uh, sort of um, hidden or buried sort of ground that, that has traction you know that you can get traction off so maybe that's what you want in those sorts of circumstances and really you need to just figure out what kinds of uh, t snow you get and then adjust accordingly um, anyway uh, so that's basically what I'm trying to say your grass gravel and snow mode isn't always your best tool for the job in snow because there are many kinds of snow and the snow that you're you're going to come across may not be the kind of snow that uh, you want in the grass gravel and snow mode finally speaking some vehicles have this automatic function and on the terrain that you've just seen um, on the highways there where it's a mixture of uh, compacted snow but also gravel and maybe some tarmac and maybe some deeper snow where it's blown across there you might want automatic because uh, the automatic mode really does work very well to 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 figure out what kind of a uh, what kind of a surface you're over and what kind of functionality you're going to want from the vehicle uh, so in these kinds of circumstances usually automatic it also stops the back end being locked up quite so much when you have got good traction which would put pressure on the differential um, in short your grass gravel and snow mode you should be using when you've got a slick surface or a very powdery light surface of snow that is likely to shear quite quickly or quite easily or ice or anything that's very very slippy uh, and if you have the deeper snow then basically you're going to be wanting to look into something like modern ruts uh, or sand um, and I'm mentioning this because the book does say it but not many <laughs> not many people read the book anyway I hope that was helpful uh, I'm going to stop now because you can see this very pretty sunset and I'm going to take some photographs of it um, so thank you very much for tuning in do like and subscribe to the channel there'll be more video content popped up these are going to be a bit shorter as I mentioned in a couple of previous videos because I've got some fairly major academic work to, to be getting involved with so I'm going to book about six weeks of these things and then focus on some focus on some academic work so thank you very much uh, if you've got any comments or you'd like any uh, sort of suggestions or things covering please let me know and we'll go on with that see you next week cheerio